doggy changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. Thank you. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for Jesus is alive, and Jesus has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Jesus, and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Behold, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I will create. For I will create Jerusalem to be a delight and its people a joy. I will rejoice over Jerusalem and take delight in my people. And the sound of weeping and of crying will be heard in it no more. Never again will there be in it an infant who lives but for a few days, or an old man who does not live out his years. He who dies at a hundred will be thought to be a mere youth, and he who fails to reach a hundred will be considered accursed. They will build houses and dwell in them, and they will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. No longer will they build houses and others live in them, or plant and others eat. For as the days of a tree, so will be the days of my people. My chosen ones will long enjoy the works of their hands. They will not toil in vain, or bear children doomed to misfortune, for they will be a people blessed by the Lord, and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer, and while they are still speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb will feed together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox, but the dust will be the serpent's food. They will neither harm nor or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you, while he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others.
It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them, who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up. and ran to the tomb. <laughs> Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves. and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. Brothers and sisters in Christ, today is a new day. Today is the day which the ancient church refers to as the eighth day. Today is the pinnacle moment in God's great story of salvation. Today, the stone is rolled away. Today, the tomb is empty. Today, paradise is opened to all. Back in 1799. Napoleon and his colossal French army were camped right outside an Austrian village named Feldkirk. The villagers there knew that Napoleon was soon planning to capture their town. That night, the village elders met and admitted to themselves that there was no possible way that they could ever defend themselves against such a massive military machine. Thus, the villagers decided that they would signal their surrender to Napoleon the next morning. That next morning just happened to be Easter morning. As was the custom of the village, every church bell in town was rung that morning, calling the faithful to worship and ringing out the good news of Jesus for all to hear. Upon hearing the crashing and banging and pealing of the bells so loudly and triumphantly that morning, Napoleon was shocked. Fearing that the bells must certainly be ringing out to call all brave Austrians to stand against the French, Napoleon ordered his troops to retreat. The pealing of the bells of Easter had saved the people of Feldkirk from certain defeat. The bells of Easter are the bells of new life. The bells of Easter ring out that, ancient, that humanity's ancient enemies of sin, death, and evil, those enemies are now in retreat. The bells of Easter are the bells of victory. The bells of Easter proclaim with St. Paul, death has been swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The great Southern preacher Fred Craddock once said, In the light of the good news of Easter, the truly unforgivable sin is to remain dead. 
in light of the good news of Easter, the truly unforgivable sin is to remain dead. What Craddock was trying to say is that in light of Jesus' resurrection on Easter morn, will you and I now ring out the bells of victory? Or will you and I choose to stay in the tomb and remain dead? Will we followers of Jesus Christ choose to merely exist as the walking dead? Or will we be the church? Will we truly be the body of Christ in this world? The body of Christ active and alive in this world, ringing out the good news that Jesus lives. Of course, we all know that Easter presents preachers like myself with a great opportunity to proclaim victory, to hit a home run, as Vin Scully might have put it. But home runs aside, just why does the message of Easter matter? Just why does Easter matter? Just what does this victory proclaimed by preachers and banged out by bells really mean in our daily lives? Just how can you and I make Easter not just a day, but a new approach to life? In our gospel reading this morning, St. Luke tells us, that the women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. Perhaps there is no more basic human emotion than fear. Nonetheless, one of the most oft-repeated phrases by Jesus during his earthly ministry was, do not be afraid. Fear is the true ball and chain of our broken humanity. Fear is the true jailer which holds us in captivity. Whether it be the fear of failing, the fear of doing without, the fear of being emotionally vulnerable, or that greatest fear of all, the fear of dying. Fear is an ancient stone which seeks to close fast the tomb of each one of our lives. Fear keeps us stuck inside our tombs. But, but the bells of Easter proclaim that fear will not have the last word. St. Luke continues, but Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping to look in. What do you think would be Peter's message to us this Easter if Peter was the one preaching this sermon? Get up and run. Run to see. Run to hear. Run to proclaim the good news. Folks, our city, our nation, our world, needs the church to get up and run. Our city, our nation, our world needs the church to get up and feed the hungry. Get up and lift up those who are oppressed. Get up and be salt and be light to this fallen world. In our schools, in our workplaces, in our homes, it is time for we, the church, to get up boldly and proclaim that Christ is risen. Proclaim that Christ is risen both through our words and through our deeds. It is time for we, the church, to get up and run. In his latter years, the great Winston Churchill once went to speak at the Harrow School in London. Moving slower at his advanced age, Churchill shuffled slowly up to the podium. 
Once he was in place, Churchill spoke the following words. Never, 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 ever give up. Churchill then went and sat down. Never, 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 ever give up. In probably the shortest speech that Churchill ever gave, Churchill captured the courage of faith. To live as Easter people is to never stop fighting the good fight of faith. To live as Easter people is to never, 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 ever give up. Never, 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 ever to go back into our tombs as if we were still dead. People of God, on this Easter Sunday, hear the bells ringing. Hear the bells as they ring out the good news that Jesus lives, the victory's won. Hear the bells as they ring out the good news that the strife is o'er, the battle done. Hear the good, hear the bells as they ring out the good news that Jesus Christ is risen today. For truly, this day we know that Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.
of rejoicing, we pray for the life of the church, the world, and all people in any need. You give life to your church by joining the baptized to the body of Christ. Bless all the baptized as we proclaim the one whose death and resurrection makes us one in you. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. You give life to the world by laying a cornerstone among the nations. Rebuild the powers and principalities around us in ways that protect the vulnerable and raise up the lowly. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. You give life to those in need by the anointing of your Holy Spirit. Comfort those who suffer. Encourage those who take care of the sick. Bind up the brokenhearted and wipe away the tears of all who mourn. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. You give life to St. Matthew's Church and the other groups of believers around the world by infusing us with love for one another. Inspire us to reach out to our neighbors in meaningful ways and bring the joys of community to a wider family of people. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. You give life to your saints by setting a banquet table of rich food. Feed us with the bread of life and bring us with all your saints to the feast that has no end. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Into your hands, O God, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in Jesus Christ, who taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O life-giving God, in the mystery of Jesus' death and resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of heaven to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to Jesus' resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through the same, Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. Amen. And now, may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the everlasting covenant, equip you with everything good, that you may do God's will, working in you that which is pleasing in God's sight. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace in the name of the risen Christ. Amen.